Hey folks, what's up? Ashish here for Technospot.net and I've been using Moto E from last six days and there are a lot of things which have impressed me about device and there are a lot of things which have really annoyed me about device. So I'm going to talk about that in my today's review. The phone has been launched at Flipkart at a price of 699 which is a very sweet price point for the kind of hardware configuration you get and kind of features you get especially with the Android Lollipop version. We'll get to see in this review if these features are really worth, if the device is really worth and if you should be investing 7000 rupees on this phone. Build and design. When you hold this phone in your hand, you're going to get a premium feeling. There are two reasons for this. The first reason is the matte rubberish finish in the rear. It's quite different from what Moto E was in the first generation which delivered more of a plastic look but here things are different. It feels premium, it feels rock solid and there is a special band around Moto E second generation which can be changed so you can have a blue or you can have a purple on that band and especially if you get the white version it really feels good. Now the buttons are on the sides and they respond really well and they're easy to press so no problems there as well. Now the matte finish and the band they actually improve the grip you get on the phone. While this is not a very light phone it's not heavy phone as well but the grip which have been which have marks like on the sides which adds up the grip display and swipe experience moto e houses a 4.5 inch screen which has qsd resolution which means it's less than 720p but it's better than wvga it's actually very sharp with 245 ppi and you really feel like it's a sd display at this price point i mean you especially with the android lollipop i've been using this phone and the texts are really sharp and the display is really fine especially when you are viewing from very great angles it just works out very very smoothly it's an ips lcd display with corning gorilla glass 3 which is a huge advantage at this price point because it protects your phone and the screen from scratches which you get from key marks and all though i still don't recommend that you put it along and it also comes with the oleophobic protection which means it will keep the sweat and the oils mark away which you usually get when talking on the phone. The touch experience is really smooth just like the Lumia 532 which was like buttery smooth. The same experience you get with this IPS LCD panel. Now there is a small bug in the whole system where the touch responses don't come out really well many a times. Mind it I'm saying it many a times because I see the lags here and there. This is a system core issue which was also available in the Moto G because of a memory leak or whatever you can call it and I'm not sure whether that has been fixed or not but this is a problem in the Moto E touch experience and especially with the graphics we'll talk about that in a bit. Performance so apps and games basically so the phone houses a 1.2 gigahertz snapdragon quad core processor clocked at like 1.2 gigahertz comes with 1 GB of RAM 8 GB of internal storage which is, which is better than the Moto E which came only with 4 GB so you really don't need a SD card to start with. This whole combination is great for performance and everything which actually a phone needs. Also the phone comes with lollipop version which is super fluid. I mean the whole experience of the OS while using calls or when using apps or whatever you do with the phone is really smooth. This is one of the most attractive price point of this phone. Motorola has also integrated a couple of apps with them so you know the whole integration the Motorola SS and the Motorola Migrate really helps for the first time user to get on the phone and start with the phone and a couple of features which you will actually love. But I have some bad news for you mostly because the performance is an issue here especially with the games. I'm not sure if like I told you it's probably because of the system box that's what my colleagues say but it's there so when you play games like Asphalt 8, Airborne the whole thing crashes and if you have seen my gaming video review you already know about it so this is kind of performance issues there now also while using the phone on here and there that touch response lags which actually kills the whole experience so though, even though Motorola with Moto E 2nd generation is trying to deliver an experience but this touch issue is actually killing off everything this is one thing which is keeping me off from recommending this phone so what i will suggest is you know probably you can wait for a system update and then go for buying Moto e camera it houses the 5 megapixel camera which shoots at 2592 
1944 pixels and it has got inbuilt fo all focus mode now the phone doesn't have a manual focus because it takes picture as soon as you tap anywhere but when it's little dark or when it's not able to focus you get that tap to focus option right there now the camera is perfect for daylight and casual photography but don't expect still a lot because only a 5 megapixel camera the low light shots are still decent enough with a patcher of f by 2.2 it also supports 4x digital zoom but i'll recommend you not use it because it really uh, creeps me out of i've tried it and it creeps it out but the camera has got a lot of features for example it comes with burst mode auto sdr panorama wide shots and all those stuff now the phone doesn't have a flash with the rear camera so you can expect that kind of performance and the front camera is only VGA which helps during video calls but again don't expect a lot of stuff here now the best part of the camera is that it can actually record SD videos like 7 1080p uh, videos can be recorded which is much much better than the 480p with like the Lumia 532 records in so this is a huge advantage and you can just hit the camera button of the video part and it starts recording that's a huge huge thing battery now Moto E comes with 2390mAh battery which is actually huge keeping in mind the price point you don't get really that kind of battery at this price point so it has got a huge battery but it still surprised me by not going in two day um, life it only got me 24 hours which is good enough for your daily driver stuff and do all stuff like gaming and music and all so I'll just pass it on that at least it's not going to kill your experience by you know by 8 to 10 hours but it'll deliver complete 24 hours experience with at least 4 to 5 hours of screen time which is important which is very very important keeping in mind you know you want to use the phone daily and you don't want your battery to go off now and then speakers this is one of the best selling point of uh, Motorola e second generation now what they have done is smartly is they put the speaker right where you receive calls so the speakers have gone up there this means the speakers are actually front facing they're not in the rear this means anyway you keep the phone the loudness is really outstanding you're going to love the music quality because it's not only loud it's also clear then you can go ahead and use the equalizer to get the best out of music now there are a lot of online apps with like the online streaming app the music apps which you can use with your phone and you can enjoy a lot of music conclusion now moto e is actually a great phone it's absolutely worth the money but the only thing that is stopping me to recommend you guys is the touch issue and the gaming issue which has been occurring all the time from last six days it's not like one day or two days and the worst part is i've even tried on a second phone which my friend got it ordered and it had the same same problem so the thing is if this bug can be squashed this phone can be real value for money but until then i'll ask you to hold off buying a Moto E or if you buy it it'll be you know you going to the service center and all probably because it's happened with me it happened with some other guy it might not happen with the other guy so it could be uh, something else as well but there is a system issue which Motorola needs to fix so guys thanks for watching the video this was Ashish for technospot.net do subscribe to our channel like the video and share this with your friend who are looking for a Moto E review of second generation might it have used a 3G version it's not the LTE version that's watching awesome.